Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today record, the story of the tenor box from 1978. So let's get started. Look at me. I'll 
walk over to him. Here, puppy, and, and put him on the apron. Nice doggy. I'm not here to hurt you. I'll just pick you up and... Why, he let me do it. Now I'll put you here on the apron. There. Now I'll fill my pockets with the coppers. Ugh, there. I've stuffed my pockets. Now I'll put the dog back on the top of the stack of coins. Here, oh, there. Now I'd best be on my way. Once the dog was put back in its rightful place, the one-eyed animal looked very mean. I think that I'd better get out of this room. So he slammed the door shut and locked it. Now, she said that I should find another door. It must be further on down this path. So deeper into the cave walked the soldier. As he did, strange sounds seemed to surround him. Oh, I, I hope I'm doing the right thing. I want to go further, but my feet keep wanting to turn around. And just as he was about to turn around, he came upon the second door. It was three times as large as the first, and this one looked as if it were over 300 years old. I'll try to open it. My, there is a key in the lock. I'll, I'll turn it. I can't believe it. The lock turned with such ease. The door is open, and the room is filled with silver, a fortune in silver. And there is a dog, and he has two eyes, and he is meaner looking than the first. So once again, he did what the old woman had told him to do. He emptied his pockets of the copper coins and filled them with the silver. Then he put the two-eyed dog back on the top of the pile of silver coins and closed the door. I can't wait till I find the third room. And I wonder if I shall find the tinderbox that the old woman wants. This part of the cave was darker than the others. Very carefully, he put one foot in front of the other. It was so dark that he could not even see his hand in front of his face. Then a strange voice filled the cave. It frightened him so much that he started to shake. Send down the vine so that I can get out of here. I'll lower the 
wine if you promise to send us the tinderbox first. No. How do I know that you will help me out then? Don't you trust me, young man? I don't know. Oh, this is so strange. I don't believe that this is really happening. I found the coppers, the silver, and the gold, and in each room there were the strange dogs. But I have a funny feeling that something even stranger is about to happen. One last time. Promise to send the tinder box up first. No, I will not. Then I shall leave you at the bottom of oh, the tree no. overnight. Maybe by morning you will change your mind. I will wait till the sun rises to ask you again. With those words, the old woman walked into a dark forest. Soon the young man was all alone in the tree hollow. To tell you the truth, he was a little frightened. I wonder why she wants this old box, when she could have all the gold and silver that is held in each of these rooms. The secret must be in the box. I try to open it, but it is locked. Well, I'll try anyway. Try as he might, the box remained closed. Just as he was about to put it down, he accidentally knocked the gold lock with his hand. There was a clap of thunder and a curl of yellow smoke. There, sitting at his side, was the one-eyed dog from the room of commerce. Soldier was carried to a window in the kitchen of the palace. 
He waited and waited, and then the door of the kitchen slowly opened, and there, walking in his sleep, was the king of the land. He walked very slowly over to where the fresh cold milk was kept, and poured one glass and drank it. Then another, and another. Master, you must awaken him before he drinks it all, or he will not believe you. Well, I'll have to climb through this window, but it is locked. Try again. <gasps> Why? Why, it is now open. The soldier creeped over to the king and started to awaken him. Great king. Great, great king. Wake up. What is, what is it? What is it? Oh, have you solved the mystery of the disappearing milk? <laughs> What am I doing here in the kitchen, in the middle of the night, in my nightshirt? You have been walking in your sleep and coming into the kitchen and drinking all the milk. Oh, I have? Well, I don't believe it. It's true. Imagine that. Oh, you're very smart. Well, be in the throne room tomorrow morning and you shall be rewarded. The next day the soldier was made royal solver of great mysteries. The palace in the land was at last very happy. Then one day, the royal princess returned home from her voyage around the world. Now she was the most beautiful princess in all the world, and the soldier fell in love with her as soon as he saw her. But he was not a prince, and he thought he would never be able to marry her. Each day the soldier would return to his chamber and think to himself, I wish I were a prince, then I would be able to marry the king's daughter. If there was only some way that I could become a crowned prince and have the girl want to marry me. As he was sitting next to the window, an idea came to him. I shall disguise myself as, as a prince and call on the princess. So he took the old tinderbox off of the shelf and knocked on the lock three times. No sooner than you could say zip, the three-eyed dog was at his side. Dress me as a prince in cloth of pure gold. It shall be done, master. You are now dressed as a prince. This is the hour that the royal princess spends in the garden. Transport me there. It is done. A gust of wind picked the soldier up and placed him in the royal garden. He waited near the path the princess was walking on. As she appeared, he said, Your Highness. Who are you? A, a prince from a far off land. I have heard of your great beauty, and I seek your hand in marriage. I cannot marry you. I do not even know you. How can you know me when we have only just met? Uh, but I... I saw you once as you passed by my palace, and I fell in love with you at first sight. Well, then come and call on me. Take me to dances and feasts. Then maybe after a while I will love you. Oh, but your father, I know, will not let me see you. If you love me so much, you must find a way for us to see each other. I must leave. Wait by your opened window tomorrow night. I shall send someone for you. But my window is in the highest tower. How will that be? Sit there and you will see. Well, needless to say, the princess waited. And suddenly, a giant two-eyed dog appeared on the window ledge and spoke. Uh, you must come with me. I do not believe it. I have been sent for you. Your prince awaits. Come, grab hold of my collar. We shall be off. I have ridden in coaches and on horses but never on the back of the dog. The dog whisked the princess off to meet the soldier. Well, they had a most wonderful time, and so it went for several months. During the day, the princess could hardly keep her eyes open. For instead of sleeping all night, she was out dancing. You're always so tired, my dear. Do you not feel well? Uh, I'm all right. Don't you sleep at night? Oh, I do, father, I do. I'm very tired. May I go? Well, you may go. King? Why don't you put locks on the outside of her door? Then you would know that she must stay in each night. That is the only way out of her tower room. I will do it. So that night, five great bolts were hammered and locked in place. Now I know she will get a good night's sleep. But the very next morning, the princess was even more tired than the night before. The king and the queen were really quite worried. Dear, I will sew this bag of little dried peas onto her dress and put a hole in the bottom of it. Then it will leave a clue as to where she goes and what she does. That is, if she really goes out. So the queen hid the bag in the princess's dress. And as it had happened all the previous night, the dog came for the princess and whisked her to the inn where the soldier lived. The clock struck midnight as the king and the queen unlocked the door to the princess's room. The king was amazed and said, She's gone. But how could it be? Look, my 
my dear. There, on the floor, is a dry pea. And another right here by the window. We'll follow the dry peas. They followed them all the way to the magic palace of the disguised soldier prince. Open up! In the name of the king! And the queen! Father! Mother! The house! Oh, don't say a word! You! You are the man who solved the mystery of the vanishing milk. You and my daughter have been seeing each other? I, I want to marry her. Look, look at my palace and my servants. I want to marry my prince. You be quiet. You don't know what you want and what you don't want. You're just the princess. We know what is right and what is wrong for you, and he is wrong. But I love him. Yes, your majesty. Well, take this man to the royal prison at once. Father, I will never speak to you again. We have decided that you will marry the Prince Harold in two days. You must forget about this silly man. But I have never seen this Prince Harold. I will not marry him. You will. I have made up my mind. Things were not going very well for the soldier. He was locked in a dungeon where he could not even see the light of day. The keeper of the dungeon, early on the second morning, came to him and said, Well, the king shall make you stay here for the rest of your days. Too bad. And the princess is going to marry that silly Prince Harold today. Oh, oh, can you do me a favor? Well, that depends. What is it? In my room where I used to live, there is an old tinderbox. It belonged to my mother. Can you please get it and bring it to me? If you do, I'll give you this piece of silver that I have hidden away. You'll give that to me just for getting that box? I'll do it. And hurry. I really need it right now. The keeper of the dungeon ran all the way to find the tinderbox and bring it back. Meanwhile, the afternoon came and all was ready for the wedding. I don't want to go through with this. You will. You'll get to like him, I'm certain. Well, we're holding the wedding outside in the tulip garden. The princess cried all through the <laughs> arrival of the guests. And soon the moment was at hand. The wedding started. The princess began walking very slowly down the aisle. Suddenly, from the sky came a giant three-eyed dog with a soldier on his back. He landed, grabbed the princess, and flew away. You came for me. I never thought you would. I got my tinderbox, and it saved you. Now let us fly on to a new land where we can be married. I'm so happy. This is becoming a wonderful day. Thanks to you and the magic tinderbox. They began their life anew, and thanks to the tinderbox, they lived happily forever after. So that was the story of the Tinderbox from 1978. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. In our next record will be the story of Han Blank and the Silver Skater, of the, of the Silver Skates. <laughs>